Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Commission tells EU member states to recall possible horse meat. EU green petrol could increase prices and damage cars. Legislation highlighting damage to dolphins and other marine mammals. Free trade on the left, protectionism on the right. Here I am stuck in the middle with EU. Finally, legislation reveals endocrine disruptor threat to public health. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, from our homepage, the EU Commission has advised EU countries to check beef products originating from the Netherlands for horse meat. Dutch companies distributed falsely labelled beef to 16 EU countries between January 1, 2011 and February 15 of this year, the Commission has said. An estimated 50,000 tonnes of beef are suspected of containing traces of horse meat. Personally, I stopped eating beef about five months ago as it kept giving me the trots. British drivers have been warned that an EU-backed green petrol could leave millions with higher fuel costs and even damage vehicles. The new petrol is ethanol-based, called E10, and is due to be launched in the UK later this year alongside standard petrol and other green fuels. Now, given that Britain is already not agriculturally independent and relies upon imported foods, the UK will now be giving over arable land to grow crops to produce ethanol to burn in cars. Furthermore, the Drax power station is being converted to biomass and the BBC report states Drax's demand for biomass will be huge, more than the entire output of forests in the UK. Then there are all the solar farms going up all over the UK, further enveloping grazing and arable land. So you can look forward to a lower cost to charge your mobile phone and run your car, but flour will be sold by the gram and cost more than cocaine. The report in our legislation section states that marine mammal numbers have experienced a dramatic decrease in recent years. It is estimated that tens of thousands die each year in EU waters alone. Therefore, the Commission is called upon to review the effectiveness of the measures laid down in this regulation by no later than December 2015, and accompanying this review will be an overarching legislative proposal for ensuring the effective protection of marine mammals such as whales and dolphins. The European Union plans to tighten up its defences against unfair competition from dumped and subsidised goods. The proposed measures will benefit all sides, producers, importers and users, said the EU Trade Commissioner. He then went on to say, we want to equip EU businesses better to tackle unfair trade practices abroad while not negatively affecting EU consumers or companies that rely upon imports. Now, how the Commissioner plans to invoke such measures while still maintaining and developing free trade agreements with third world nations, where production costs are minuscule in comparison to members of the EU bloc, appears to be something of a mystery. As medical research develops, there is growing concern over materials and compounds originally thought to be benign that actually have significant effects on the human body. The endocrine system, which regulates metabolism, growth, cardiac functions, etc., is being found to be disrupted by many materials found in food packaging, skin care products, cosmetics, building materials, electronic goods, furniture and floorings. Many plastics in everyday use contain one or more chemical which are thought to have endocrine disrupting properties. However, as most of these items do not come with a list of contents, it is impossible for consumers to know what substances are present. What is of concern is that the endocrine disruptors which are released from materials and products accumulate in dust, which can mean that infants who crawl on the floor and also tend to like putting things in their mouths are at particular risk of exposure. This is worrying as children are also more susceptible to them. Today in our video library, the 
Changes to European Union rules around the Specialist Preferential Trading Agreement, known as GSP, means that Thailand, being a middle-income country, will no longer be eligible for the GSP arrangement. The impact of this could affect the exports to the EU by as much as 40%. To combat the changes, the political rhetoric has begun with respect to the negotiation of a free trade agreement. The European Union Thailand Free Trade Agreement, formally launched on March 6th this year, has marked an important step in EU-Thai relations. The European Asian Business Centre has organised an annual general meeting on the progress of the negotiation between EU Thailand and EU Asia. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the word section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive, broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google Plus, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, The Unit, on Google Plus. Links to the community page are below. <laughs>